Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this unusual but historic rendition of one of the most important days of our lives. My name is Rachel Rodriguez, and I have the privilege of serving as a student body president for the class of 2020. It is such an honor to be delivering this speech in front of all of you today. I want to start off by thanking the East Hall administration and the Hall County School Board for the amount of effort that was put into finding a resolution to this mayhem. Thomas M. Monson once said, we can't direct the wind, but we can adjust the sails. Adjust for maximum happiness, peace, and contentment, and may we always choose a positive attitude. Graduates, although this is not the most ideal approach to the end of our senior year, it is up to us as a class to decide what mindset we want to take on. We may not be walking across the stage and receiving our diplomas. We may not be throwing our caps in the air or taking pictures with our families and friends, but we are still graduating, and that is still valid. Our hard work has not gone unnoticed. Our dedication, determination, and commitment still remain true. And I know right now some of us may feel lost or uncertain, but believe me when I tell you that nothing, even as big as this global pandemic, can stand in the way of your heart's deepest ambitions and dreams. So I'm encouraging you to focus on the good times, on the accomplishments, the memories, the amazing relationships that were made. Yeah, we had to wrap up the most beautiful part of our senior year early. But it's in times like these where a step back is needed to realize that every single person on the planet is forced to deal with hardships from time to time. And that's just how life is. And you don't improve your life by complaining or refusing or dwelling. You improve your life by adjusting, advancing, and transforming it for the better. Class of 2020, we are capable of anything. I want to thank my beautiful family for being here and supporting me in every step that I've taken. Y'all are my number one supporters and what I am most grateful to God for. Especialmente mi mami y papi. Gracias por darme la oportunidad de tener esta educación. Les prometo que yo viviré para ser los orgullosos de mí. Thank you to all the members of Student Council for helping bring my ideas towards East Hall to life. And thank you, Ms. Ayers, for keeping me sane in the process. Thank you to every educator that's taken part in guiding, disciplining, and pushing me to do my best. The influence of a good teacher can never be erased. Thank you to every friend I've made along the way. Cindy, Giselle, Arelli, my clarinet section, my fellow club officers, my CNA girls. So much of me is made from each and every one of you. And lastly, the biggest thank you to East Hall for everything that you've gifted me. I am proud to be graduating as a Viking. Congratulations, class of 2020. I can't wait to see where life takes us. Good evening, East Hall. As we gather tonight to celebrate the graduates of the class of 2020 of East Hall High School, I would like to do things a bit differently than in years past. I would like to start by posing just a few questions for each of us to ponder tonight. Who would have thought we would all be sitting in our cars to celebrate this graduation ceremony? Who would have thought that we would all be standing in line to buy the last roll of Charmin toilet paper? Who would have thought that someone's smile could be so easily seen from behind a mask? Who would have thought that a nearby sneeze could end in an all-out brawl? Who would have thought that an extended handshake could trigger the question, what you doing, bro? But seriously, folks, who would have thought that social distancing would have brought us closer than ever before? Class of 2020, today, you traveled your last journey as a student through the campus of East Hall High School. With your diploma in hand, you will now begin another journey in a world experiencing unprecedented events. This new journey will be incomprehensible to most people because it is a path of uncertainty that is yet to be explored. Your journey will be a process of personal challenges that will involve developing into adulthood and into productive community citizenship. While the years following high school graduation will often be filled with difficult choices, you're facing a world battling a global pandemic that brings many uncertainties. Graduates, you will need several personal traits in order to successfully navigate this next significant journey in your life. First, you'll need to be adaptable. Unfortunately, you experienced a senior year filled with unexpected and unwelcomed events. 
You did not get the opportunity to finish your time at East Hall High School as others did in the past. You missed making memories and spending time with friends, teammates, coaches, and teachers. You lost final games, drama productions, a prom, yearbook day, award ceremonies, and other significant events expected of a traditional senior year. And as I think about those things, I kind of like to relate them to my personal scenario. I can reflect back to my senior year of high school. And at that point in time, uh, you know, part of my background was baseball. I wanted to be a baseball player. I had a goal of someday becoming a professional baseball player. And I know tonight is not about me, but I just want to connect it to what you guys are going through. You know, at that point in time in my senior year, I spent almost every day doing something in relation to becoming a better baseball player. And as I think about the experience that you guys have had, you know, my heart goes out to each and every one of you because each of you lost a big part of what it means to be a senior in high school and the senior experience. And I'm sorry for what we lost, but, you know, good things will come from this as well. You know, anger and resentment often develop when we're forced to give up unexpected privileges. However, you had to adapt to the situation and face the reality that your sacrifices were for the common good. Adaptability is a good character trait in people. This current experience has helped to mold the young adult that you're becoming, and it will inevitably contribute to how successful, how successfully you deal with challenges in the future. Our Viking shield includes the traits of honor and integrity. You all is illustrated these traits as you embraced a rather unusual ceremonial process to your senior celebrations and to your graduation today. Your willingness to adapt in unexpected situation, in situations will certainly contribute to new traditions created here at East Hall High School, and you'll go down in school history as the class who paved the way for others. Next, graduates, you, should, uh, you must remember that difficult and unforeseen times call for perseverance. Life will be a series of endless journeys that require personal endurance. As part of our Viking shield, be reminded that strength, effort, and determination are necessities to accomplishing great things. Sometimes, Life will bring you difficult people and events that will test your greatest patience and deepest emotions. However, you will need to find the inner strength to persevere. The true character of a person lies in how he or she handles a situation with honor and integrity. The sequential happenings of most situations are often forgotten, but people will always remember how you reacted in those situations. Your illustration of grace and dignity during tough times will result in others having tremendous respect for you as a person. Perseverance should be a habit in your life as you journey forward. Our East Hall softball team is a good example of true perseverance as they improve each year remaining region champions for the past four years with their best finished in 2019 in the Elite Eight, representing our school in the state playoffs for the first time in the city of Columbus. Our competition cheerleaders have made it to the state semifinals in each of the past five years, with this year marking the milestone of finishing in the top 10 at the state level as our region runner-up. These students collectively persevered as a team and held strongly to a common goal as champions. Aristotle once said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. Finally, our journey is most meaningful when we exhibit the trait of selflessness. While our problems may seem huge in the moment, the problems of the world are much larger and affect a much larger group of people. As an example, a, com a commitment to community service. The East Hall ROTC devoted over 2,500 hours this school year. Our school council, HOSA, HOSA organization, our course 
have all recently visited area nursing homes to offer their time to be residents or to the residents. The baseball team, FCA, and the Beta Club work with area charities to help the homeless and provide free clothes, toys, food to community members in need. The Tome Society wrote letters to troops deployed outside the United States during holidays. East Hall students also contribu contributed to the communities of younger generation. For example, the Viking Band dedicated time visiting our local elementary schools to share the joy of fine arts and music education. The Beta Club donated their time to work in a local daycare facilities and, honor, and our honors work-based learning students collected books, toys, and other needed items for the pediatric unit of Northeast Georgia Health System. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the class of 2020 across the country had to be selfless. You had to put your situation into perspective and realize that people we're globally losing jobs, dealing with a, a terrible contagious virus, and perhaps even working through the grief of a lost loved one. The Viking Shield reminds us that loyalty to others and to our global issues are of the utmost priority during these unusual times. Graduates, I challenge you to find a cause that needs your selflessness whether that cause be a person or a charity. Your time and commitment to those who have greater needs will serve your heart in a way that is not comparable to anything that you will experience in life. Giving of oneself is the greatest gift of all. To the class of 2020, you are challenged with the worst of times during what should be the best of times. You will need to be adaptable, to have perseverance, and to hold selflessness as your life mantra in a world with many needs. Accept this challenge like a true Viking with strength, honor, integrity, effort, loyalty, and determination. Always remember that the only impossible journey is the one that you never begin. And it just takes a small step forward, even if down an unpredictable path. Congratulations, class of 2020. Thank you. Good evening, fellow graduates and parents. My name is Cindy Argueta, and I am proud to be the salutatorian of the East Hall High School class of 2020. Sometimes I think about our last physical day of high school, and I constantly get stuck on the fact that it happened to be on Friday the 13th. It seems like things weren't gonna go as planned, However, this time we've been given has allowed me to think a lot about the future. I bet all of us at one point have shared the feeling of thinking that our life has to be planned out by now. And if it's not planned or if we don't have a backup, then what are we gonna do? Well, I say it's okay to not have an exact plan. It's okay to not know. And it's totally okay to feel stressed out about it. But it's not okay to let your potential peak right now just because our future is unknown. Life is a journey, and although we had an incredible time in high school, we don't stop growing once we receive our diplomas. There are so many more things to see, to learn, and to experience. We will make plenty of mistakes and will change our minds a thousand times because we'll never truly be able to know what our lives will consist of. But what I do know is that we have all chosen different paths, and in those paths, we will gain the same opportunity to learn and grow in our respective journeys. This graduation just shows what we are capable of achieving, no matter the circumstances or unexpected barriers we might come across. There was a time where the thought of graduating high school absolutely terrified me because I didn't want to leave high school and I thought nothing could compare to these days. And so Mr. Really turned to me and he said, please don't let high school be the best time of your life. And so I say to you, let's reminisce on our past, not dwell on our past. Let's learn from it and move forward to greater things in life. I'd like to thank every single teacher that I've ever had because all have contributed to getting me here somehow through their teachings that I will carry for the rest of my life. I wanna thank my friends, those that have graduated, those who I'm sadly leaving behind, and those who are graduating along with me today. To my senior friends, Rachel, Janet, Sam, Melly, Selena, Mags, Ale, Gavino, Magdil, and Alejandro. 
and many more, thank you. Thank you so much for making my senior year memorable and for allowing me to experience this last year with you all. I'll always remember us going to the Humane Society to try and finish our hours because we really wanted our stoles. I'll always remember us laughing in class because we never really knew what econ was really about. I'll always remember our trips to Quick Trip after games and rehearsals. And especially, I'll always remember the bond I have created with you all. Quiero darle gracias a mis padres por siempre apoyarme y que como su única hija, espero haberlos hecho sentir orgullosos de mí hasta este punto y seguiré en haciéndolo. Lastly, I thank all of you. You may have never spoken to me. You may not even know my name. But in these four years, you all gave me a sense of familiarity and comfort when I walked the halls of East Hall. I wish all of you well in the next chapter of our lives. Congratulations, class of 2020. We really are a class to remember. Class of 2020, my name is Alicia Gray and I am honored to stand here as your valedictorian. Today, I wanna to acknowledge what I can imagine is, is mixed feelings for everybody. I know that in the midst of these times right now, we've, we've been struggling, but I also know that we're here to celebrate and we're here to honor everything you've accomplished. And I read a quote the other day that said, we were born on the wake of 9-11 and now we're graduating in a global pandemic. This class has been defined by difficulties, but we have also been defined by how we've overcome and how we have resilience in the face of difficulties. Today, I wanna to share a little bit of my personal story and just hopefully encourage you and remind you that this is not the end for us, but this is the beginning for us. About three years ago, I got my fourth concussion playing basketball. Ever since then, I've had debilitating chronic and body pain. Every single day, the pain was to the point where it was too difficult to manage. I went to every doctor, every specialist they had. I missed so many days of school, I'm surprised they're letting me graduate. It got to the point where all I did was pain and pain ruled my life. And I'll never forget this past December, I went to a clinic in Boston and that is when everything began to change for me. And I'm still in pain, but I'm glad to say that I'm now on the road to recovery and I'm getting better every single day. And so I don't say a little bit of my story to gain your sympathy or to make this a Debbie Downer speech, but rather I say that to hopefully encourage you and remind you of these three things. And number one, that God is on your side and we can do anything when he's on our side. We are completely exuberated with his strength and his mercy and we are unstoppable if we have his power. I wouldn't be where I am today without his strength guiding me every single step of the way. Number two, I wanna encourage you that these roadblocks aren't hindrances to your success, but rather they are the catapults to our success. This COVID-19 doesn't define you. Whatever you've been through in your life doesn't define you, but what defines you is the fact that we are gonna let our difficulties grow us and strengthen us and our character and our purpose are produced in the difficult seasons. I love the quote that says, the same fire that destroys is the same fire that purifies. So to class of 2020, I encourage you that whatever you've been through, whatever you've done, let that be your purification and let's come out of this stronger and better for it. And lastly, I wanna remind you that whether you're going to college, whether you're going to the military, or whether your future is, that I hope and I pray that our future will be one that is loving and serving people. Mother Teresa says that the greatest work is done with purpose and love. And so I hope that whether we go out into our next season of life, that we can remember that love and serving our fellow man is the best form and the best purpose we can have. So class of 2020, I know this has been difficult. I know that this is not how we mentioned our senior year, but I hope to remind you that with our perseverance, with faith, and with strength and loving and serving our fellow man, we can change the world. And as cliche as it sounds, I really believe that with those things on our side, we are unstoppable and capable of anything. So before I end, I just wanna thank a few amazing people in my life. Number one, I wanna thank Jesus because I wouldn't be where I am without him. He is my savior and he is the reason that I can stand before you today. I also wanna thank my family, mom, dad, my sisters, you guys mean the world to me. You were there in every dark moment. You were there in the hospital room when I was struggling. You guys are the reason that I am able to be here today and I love you so much. You've made me the woman I am. To my friends, I can't name them all, but Jared, Lizzie, Sam, Taylor, Cherie, all of you, my girls, thank you for standing by me. Thank you for showing me what it means to love people and showing me what true friendship is. 
some amazing teachers, Ms. Greer, Ms. Chandler, Ms. H, you guys have made me love the art of learning and love everything that I get to do at school every day. You guys are truly life changers. And lastly, but not least, I want to thank my team in Boston. It's because of you guys that I'm able to exercise again, that I'm able to pursue my goals, and I'm able to stand here on the road to recovery. Annie, Gabby, Allie, I love you guys, and I'm forever grateful for you. Class of 2020, I am honored to be your valedictorian. I am honored to be a part of a class that is strong and resilient, and I cannot wait to see what the future holds for us. On behalf of your Board of Education, Nath Morris, Sam Chapman, Bill Thompson, Mark Pettit, and myself, Craig Harrington, I'd like to congratulate you on your 2020 graduation. Um, it's been an honor to represent your district, District 3, on the school board, as well as your chairman this year, for letting me be a small part of your graduation ceremony. Congratulations on graduating high school. I am very proud of what you've accomplished. You will likely hear something similar to that from many people over the next few days or next months. And they all are very, know it's very sincere. More importantly, you should be proud of your accomplishments to get to this point. You did it. All the hard work, struggles, and triumphs paid off. This is not the end of school, your senior year, that you expected, but it'll be one to remember. You made it. Now you have the rest of your life before you. Make it yours. Congratulations, class of 2020. I'm Nate Morris, post four representative and vice chair of your board of education. Life, your commencement ceremony, does not always go as planned. You, your family, your fellow graduates, your school, and your board did not ask for it to be this way. But the way you respond to situations that don't go as we would like or as we planned will build your character and lead to success in life. Your school has tried to make the very best that it could during these uncharted times, and the achievement that you have earned over the last 13 years is in no way diminished. I wish you the best in the next chapter of your life journey. Reach for your dreams. Always strive to do your best. Make the right choices and define your own measures of success. I'm confident that your teachers have prepared you with the knowledge and tools to go out and grab your future. I consider the class of 2020 the best I've been associated with in my 20 years on the board, considering the disruptions you have faced in the last three months. Again, congratulations, and go out and start your own chapter and make us proud. Hello, my name's Bill Thompson. I'm very proud to serve on your school board. I, along with you and many others, uh, I'm very disappointed in our ability to, uh, uh, excuse me, inability to have a normal graduation for you this year. However, I truly believe that this will be one of many disappointments, challenges that you will have to overcome in your life. And how you will react to this will make you a stronger and better person. We wish you the best in everything you ch choose to do in your future. We're very proud of you and thank you for the way you're handling this crisis. There will be many more, but it will make you stronger. I truly believe that. Good luck in everything you do. Hello, I'm Mark Pettit, a member of your Hall County Board of Education. Thank you for allowing me to be here today and share this moment with you. I'd like to congratulate you on your accomplishment in graduating as a member of the class of 2020. Please know that we're very proud of you and we look forward to seeing all that you will do in the future. Uh, this is obviously not traditional. We're in, uh, in the midst of a global pandemic. But I wanna to say to you that you have already survived and weathered and overcome so much. Many of you were born in the shadows of 9-11. You survived the greatest economic downturn since the Great Depression. And now we're in the midst of a global pandemic as you graduate high school and prepare to take on the world. Please know that we're counting on you. The world needs you. Our community needs you. We look forward to seeing what you will do. And we're behind you all the way. 
Congratulations, class of 2020. Well, class of 2020, our graduates, your families, the Hall County School District team members, many of whom have walked beside you for possibly as much as 13 years, community members and friends. On behalf of your Hall County School District, on behalf of your Hall County Board of Education, let me congratulate you, class of 2020, our heroes in the midst of this chaos. You know, my job as a superintendent for 21 years at graduations has always been to confer the diplomas, to be the one who tells your parents, tells your families, tells you, tells your Board of Education that you have met all of the requirements of the state of Georgia and the policies of your local Board of Education and you have qualified, you have run the race well, and you are now going to be declared graduates your local high school. So once again, congratulations. You know, I've been told many times, why don't you just confer the, the diplomas and get out of the way? And I say, no, 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 no. One of the few advantages of my job is I have the opportunity to give you your last lesson, give you some last challenges before you leave us and go out into this world. And so for the next couple of minutes, before I confer your diplomas, that's what I'll intend to do today. You know, it was Thoreau who said, never take the advice of an old man, because the only advice an old man will give you is areas in which he's failed. And there's probably a lot of truth to that. Growing up on a dairy farm, my dad said it a little differently. He said, wisdom is directly related to the amount of equipment that you've wrecked. And can I just be real honest with you? In my lifetime, I've wrecked a lot of equipment. And one of my hopes for you, one of my prayers for you, class of 2020, is that you will be wise enough to learn from people who've made mistakes before you, who've traveled the roads that you're about to go on, and perhaps you won't have to make some of the mistakes that, that I made, that your folks made, that the people that you work for or respect have made. So you're not getting out of it this year. I'm going to give you a few lessons, a few challenges, before you graduate today. First of all, can we just embrace the fact that times are different this year? I know this is the first time you've ever graduated from high school, but may I share with you that this is the 21st year that I have come to high school graduations as a superintendent of schools, and I've never seen anything like this before. You know, I hear a lot of words on a daily basis to describe what we're going through right now. And again, it's not only in Hall County, it's not only in Georgia, it's not only in the United States. What is really so unusual about the situation we find ourselves in is all seven billion of us on this planet, all seven billion are experiencing what you're experiencing right now. Now, we all experience it a little differently, but here's some words that would describe what you may be feeling, what maybe you've gone through in the last two, three months. Storm. A trial. Challenge. Disappointment. Surprise. And even suffering. You know, if, may I be just real candid with you and validate those feelings that you've had? Who would have hoped at the end of 13 years of school, your senior year, that all of a sudden you would go home one Friday from school in March and be told in Monday, we're not coming back. There'll be no junior senior prom. There'll be no traditional graduation. There'll be none of those last four to six weeks at school where you get together with your closest friends and the teachers and coaches that have meant so much to you and just have an opportunity, kind of in a slow way to say thank you and goodbye and to those people that are really special to you. Let's stay in touch. Let's stay in touch. That's been taken from you this year, and I just want to acknowledge that and tell you that I'm so sorry. That being said, this time of challenge, this time of storm that we've gone through has affected different people in different ways. I just talked to a man minutes ago who had his first baby. 
what a different experience that's been in the times of a pandemic than it was for me 16 years ago, 22 years ago, 24 years ago. I've heard some stories of delivery rooms throughout this country where the expectant father was not even allowed in the delivery room. Locally, I've heard stories of people being discharged from the hospital as soon as five hours after a baby was born. Unprecedented times that we did not plan for, that nobody was asking for. I have at least two very close friends who've had to see a loved one pass, a parent a mother in both situations who developed COVID. And imagine the feeling of a child whose parent is passing away that can't even go into the hospital and visit them in those final days, in those final hours. It hasn't been anything that anybody has asked for. You know, being an educator, I keep track and have relationships with a lot of folks who've gone through our schools before. Many of them have gone on to the military, gone right into the workforce, or gone to college. Just three months ago, those individuals who are graduating from college this year had all kinds of job opportunities. They said, the, the world is my oyster. My goodness, I can, I can go here or I can go there. And only in the last two, two, three months are they being told by their potential and prospective employers, you know, we're just not hiring right now. We don't know what's going to happen. The great anticipation and expectation for that group of folks has gone from, from, from way up here to a real low, wondering, am I even going to be able to get a job? So these times of storm, these times of challenge, these times of disappointment, they're real. And let me suggest another group that it's real for. Seniors in high school in the United States of America, in Georgia, in Hall County, Georgia, who were counting on this last three months of their school career to be just like they'd heard and seen in years before, much of that has been taken from me. And I want to acknowledge that. So this year I give a few points, challenge you to a few ideas that are a little different than normal. And I put them in this context of having hope in the storm. And I want to tell you some words from a man named John Gordon that spoke to my heart, and I hope it will speak to you. John Gordon said this, he said, Don't lower your belief to the level of your circumstance. Remain faithful. For even when hope seems lost, it may not seem like it today, but there is a greater plan at work in your life. So with that as a backdrop, class of 2020, I want to give you three challenges to live your life by. The first challenge I give you, in all circumstances, I have argued for over 40 years that the strength of a man, the strength of a woman, the strength of a family, the strength of an organization, the strength of a nation can be found in their ability and their willingness to protect the vulnerable. You know, it was George Washington Carver who said, Be tender with the young. Be compassionate with the old. Be sympathetic with those who are striving. And be tolerant of the weak and of the wrong. For at some time in your life, you will be every one of those. You know, I know that your initial reaction when you heard that your graduations were going to be non-traditional for some of you, it was disappointment. For some of you, it was anger. For a very small number of you, it was apathy. But can I suggest to you that one of the reasons that you're my heroes, that I'm so proud of you, is that you have, whether you've known it or not, whether you've done it willingly or unwillingly, you have taken a huge step in this community to protect the vulnerable. You know, all we have to do is travel down to Albany, Georgia, and see that one individual going to a funeral with coronavirus that he didn't know he had, later infected hundreds of people and scores of people actually died just because one person had exposed so many others. So I think it's incredible that you 18, 19 year old graduates, let's just be honest, the numbers say you're not going to be affected by coronavirus. You might have a cough, you might feel like you've got a short a little dose case of the flu, uh, but it's not going to affect you very seriously. But when you leave here and you go back to work and you go back into your homes and you go visit parents and grandparents, the chances are real that if one of you contracted COVID, you could have a deep and lasting and even terminal effect 
on someone else. You, by having these non-traditional graduations, have protected the vulnerable. And as a member of this community, let me be one of the first to say thank you for making that sacrifice for others. Second thing I would challenge you with is to always in times of turmoil, always in times of, 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 of toughness, in times of storms, realize that you have the ability to make a choice. And you can choose hope or you can choose despair. You know, I firmly believe that the creator of this universe made us in such a way that it is the trials of life, it is the challenges of life that, that create character within us so that we can climb the mountains that are in front of us in the future. The Apostle Paul said it like this. He said, your trials, in other words, your suffering, he said your suffering will lead to you having to persevere, to developing the trait of perseverance. He said that perseverance will create in you a character that knows how to overcome obstacles, that can handle whatever life throws at you in a way that's positive and keeps you moving forward. And with that character, you'll always be able to rely on the incredible quantity and quality of hope. So graduates, class of 2020, continue to protect the vulnerable. Continue to choose hope over despair. And finally, it's one that I see far too seldom in our world today. Let me challenge you, class of 2020, to always choose the hard right over the easy wrong. You know there was a legendary coach at the University of Notre Dame for their football program, and his name was Lou Holtz. And whenever Coach Holtz would get his new class in, his new football team in for the year, he'd go over the team rules, and by the way, there was one. He would tell his team this. He said, you know what? The creator of this universe has given you many gifts, team members, class here at Notre Dame University. The creator gave you the gift to choose. And that's the greatest gift that you've been given. For Lou Holtz would go on to say, you can choose to love or hate. You can choose to build people up or tear people down. You can choose to be one who's a healer or you can be one who is a divider. But this greatest gift you've been given is the ability to choose. He would go on to say, you could be in a lot of programs today that where they'd be giving you a list of 30 things you can or can't do. He said, I'm going to give you one guiding principle. And it's this. He said, do right. What does do right mean? He'd go on to say that within each and every one of us, when we're faced with a difficult decision, and by the way, most of you have already been faced with many difficult decisions, but can I just be one to tell you and share with you some truth? You're going to be faced with a lot more. And Lou Holtz would tell his players, don't look where the herd is going and make the choices that the herd is doing. Don't put a finger up in the air and say, what is the politically correct thing to do here? What's the decision that I can make where someone will pat me on the back? For he'd go on to say that within each and every one of you is a small, still voice. And in front of you, when there's this difficult decision, this small, still voice will be telling you what the right thing is to do. Class of 2020, can I challenge you? That whenever you're faced with those difficult decisions, don't follow the herd. Don't listen to the, to the chorus of public opinion. Do right. And always choose the hard right over the easy wrong. Hey, I can't congratulate you enough. I could sit here and tell you all the great things that you've done and all the great things that you're going to do. Uh, but you already know. So from the bottom of my heart, let me challenge you as you move forward to always choose and make choices and do those things that are good and right and noble and true. Congratulations, Class of 2020. Will you fight? No! We will run! And we will live! Shame on you! be the greatest night of our lives, but you're going to let it be the worst.
And I guarantee a week won't go by in your life you won't regret walking out, letting them get the best of you. Well, I'm not going home. We've got too far! And I'm gonna stay right here and fight for this lost cause. A day may come when the courage of men fails. But it is not this day. The line must be drawn here. This far, no farther. I'm not saying it's gonna be easy. You're gonna work harder than you ever worked before. But that's fine, we'll just get tougher with it. If a person grits his teeth and shows real determination. Failure is not an option. That's how winning is done. Believe me when I say we can break this army here. And win just one for the Gipper. But I say to you, what every warrior has known since the beginning of time, you've got to get mad. I mean plum mad dog mean. If you would be free men, then you must fight to fulfill that promise. They just cut out their living guts one inch at a time. And they will know what we can do! <laughs> Let no man forget how menacing we are. We are lions! You're like a big bear, man. This is your time. Seize the day. Never surrender. Victory or death. Bitch, we should pack away. Who's with me? Clap! Clap! Don't let him die! Clap! All right, let's fly! And gentlemen in England, now our bed. Shall no, my name is the Lord. Would I tell our enemies that they may take our lives, but they'll never take our Independence Day. with the regulations and policies of the Hall County Board of Education in the state of Georgia, and on behalf of this Hall County Board of Education and myself, I hereby declare that these members of the class of 2020 have met all requirements and are therefore eligible to be designated as graduates of the best high school in America, East Hall High School. Congratulations. Hi guys, it's me Gracie Smith and I'm honored to be able to give a speech for our graduation. I know the senior year was far from normal and there were many things that we never got to experience that all seniors should, but even though we didn't get the senior year we wanted, we still made it here. We're graduating high school, one of the biggest milestones in our life and we're still getting to experience it even in our present situation. Our journey to get here includes some of the best and worst times. Like in elementary school, the only thing we had to worry about was falling and scraping our knee whether or not our crush liked us, what time recess was, and what we could tra trade at the lunch table, which, between me and you, was pretty important. Then on to middle school, where most of us experienced our awkward stages, which was rough, but we made it through, as well as making it to our teen years. Finally, we reach high school, and our whole world opens up. We make new friends and relationships with people in all different aspects of life, whether it be from class, sports, or even clubs. These past four years at East Hall have been some of the most influential years of our lives. The memories and lessons we have learned and experienced here have given us the tools to be successful in our lives. The long nights under stadium lights cheering on our boys on the football team or playing in Columbus and making history. Shout out to my softball girls. The back and forth basketball game that keeps everyone on their feet and screaming. Getting our learner's license and eventually being able to drive on our own. All of these things will forever stay with us forever, no matter what we do or become in our lives. These are forever memories. 
Let's not forget pulling all-nighters when we forgot we had an important assignment due the next day, definitely making us wish we would have done it sooner, yet the next week we still wait until the last minute to do all of our assignments. Not to mention we were forever wishing Stainback would put in grades or that Coach Thompson would just let us play Ultimate Frisbee instead of doing the pacer, yet we went to school every day making new memories with these teachers and many more. They taught us lessons every day, not just school lessons, but life lessons. They wanted us to be ready for the future and what would occur during our lives, not just what we could learn in the classroom. I am thankful for these past four years that have taught me how to be a good friend, person, and for me personally, a better teammate. Whether you played sports, participated in band or chorus, or took part in the many clubs we have here, we are all a part of each other's journey to where we are. Whether we just passed each other in the hallway, or if we knew each other personally, we are all part of each other's journey to this exact moment. As we end this chapter of our lives, I want to leave you all with a verse from the Bible that speaks to me. In Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, it states, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways submit to him and he will make your path straight. Thanks for the memories, class of 2020. You will be missed. Psych, y'all thought I was done. It's time for us to turn our tassels. This symbolizes us turning from a high school senior to a high school graduate. Congratulations, everyone. Now, we're gonna go out with a bang. Everybody stay for the fireworks. <laughs>